Hello and welcome to the GFC podcast. This is where we expand on the content that we covered on Sunday and bring you a little bit more from the cutting room floor that couldn't fit into the message because everybody wants to go home on Sunday. My name is Patrick and behind the scenes with us today are Ethan and Liz. Hey guys, it's good to see you. So welcome to the podcast. Uh, Like I said, we are in this Luke series and on Sunday we talked about an encounter that Simon Peter has with Jesus, and the title of the message was From Life to Death. And uh, really what happens in this scenario is Peter is confronted by the holiness of Jesus. He realizes his guilt and shame and, you know, confesses who he is, how horrible he is, and Jesus says nothing, which means like, yeah, you are, Uh, but then also offers him hope and calls him to follow him and says this phrase, you are going to be a fisher of people. And if you grew up around church or whatever, it's fishers of men, and it's been turned into this big evangelistic kind of market. And so I wanted to talk about some of that, uh, just flesh out some of the implications of Peter's encounter with Jesus, and then also just briefly talk about evangelism and how funny that can look at times, given your history, but also just ways to practically move forward if you do want to have conversations with people. Uh, about Jesus, about your faith. And so in the text, in Luke 5, it's verses 1 through 11, uh, if you didn't get a chance to, to check that out, there is um, what I call two sides of the same coin when it comes to guilt and hope being found in the same source. And so like I said, Peter, fisherman, hard worker, doing the best that he can you know, to provide for his family, to, to work with his hands, and do um, do the work that his family's doing and his friends and all that. And so he's out there, they've been fishing all night, they catch nothing, and Jesus rolls up on the beach when these guys are ready to go home. It's morning, they've worked all night, they have nothing, they want to leave. And Jesus, you know, does, does a little teaching, and then he has Simon and the guys go out into the boat, they have this miraculous catch of fish, and Peter realizes, oh my goodness, I'm in the presence of something divine. Like, I'm not sure he knows exactly, like, oh, this is probably the second person of the Trinity. I don't know that that's going on. Uh, But he does have this encounter, and he realizes, man, I am just, woe is me, basically. He has an Isaiah moment. If you're familiar with Isaiah in the Old Testament, Job has one of these moments. Just when you encounter the holy, you realize your unholiness. And and so he just falls at Jesus' knees. And then Jesus says, come on, I got a plan for you. I want you to be fisher, a fisher of people. I want you to cast the net out of God's kingdom and haul in people who otherwise are going to die, um, not just in life, but for eternity. And so that's part of, that's the mission that he's given. And so it is about evangelism, but it's more than that. It's about discipleship. It's about following Jesus as a way of life, doing what Jesus did, speaking the way that Jesus speaks, realizing how does Jesus handle adversity or criticism, all of those things are part of it. So it's it's about becoming a disciple of Jesus. And I think one of the things that, um, you know, you realize, and I mentioned this in the sermon, is you can be inspired by sources that at the same time also break you. So like a podcast, a book that you're just like, man, this story is incredible. I can't believe what these people are achieving or accomplishing. And you can feel the guilt or the shame of not having done those things, and you can linger there and then languish, or you can flip that and just go, okay, now that is my motivation. That's my drive to do something or be something better. And I I lived in languish for a long time, for decades. And so just now recently, I think I'm on a journey where it's like, no, there's a flip side of this, and I don't have to live there. Like, I think God has something better for me if I'll pursue it, if I'll walk into it. And, you know, it doesn't God's working miraculous things in our lives doesn't negate our responsibility. I think that's something really important to cling to. Like, you still have to do some work and create these environments and these places where God feels just super free to do His thing and do what only He can do. And so um, so it's just, I think in all of this, it's just God pursuing us. And one of the things that, you know, I, I think that we see in this is that you are rescued by God, and then you become immediately a part of the rescue. And it's like, Jesus just goes, I'll equip you along the way. You're never going to feel ready. And because if you wait until you feel ready, you're actually never going to start. And so you just got to get going. Watch what I do. This is kind of the classic um, teacher method. So you're going to watch me do what I do. And then I'm going to have you do this with me. You know, we'll do this together. And then I'm going to watch you do this thing. 
whatever I've been training you in, and then I'm going to send you out and you're going to do it by yourself. And that really is the process that Jesus goes through with the disciples in the Gospels, and you see it in Acts, and then they multiply that, and here we are. You know, that, that's part of what, what um, we live in. That's our history. And so I think with that, as you start looking at, okay, what does it look like for me as a follower of Jesus to go out now and to be a fisher of people? Like, what in the world is that? Um, so I gave an illustration of from my own life of how I did that in a really goofy way at a mall in Knoxville, Tennessee one time. And um, yeah, I just never want to do that again. I never want to just walk up to a stranger and just start some random spiritual conversation expecting it to go well. In fact, one of the first things that I did when I came on staff at GFC, I went to our senior study on uh, on a Wednesday, and it was sort of like a get to know you and ask questions and one of their questions was, how would you talk to somebody about Jesus? And I thought about that, and I thought, man, not the way we used to, because we don't have the common, like the vernacular of sin is not there. We don't talk about sin as a culture. There's not a lot of shame as a culture. And so you can't really start with like, you're a sinner, and Jesus is a Savior. We're good. Let's hug, and we'll go have a coffee you've got to start with something like people are really thinking about, which is with like identity or purpose or meaning or f- fulfillment. And oftentimes people will talk to you about what they're kind of dreading or what they aren't excited about in their lives. There are open doors for all of those sorts of conversations to happen. And so if you're paying attention, you'll hear them. And it's like, you don't have to jump in, you know, if somebody's at line at Subway and they order tuna fish and you'd be like, you know who else does fishing? Jesus. Like, you don't have to be weird. Like, come on. Um, that, that's not the Jesus we want to lead people to. So, um, I think paying attention to those things are are great. Um, but then also just realizing and recognizing, you know, everyone's not called to be a professional evangelist in the sense of you're preaching some like Billy Graham level crusade that this is like Jesus's model. Yes. He preached sermons, but most people didn't follow through with anything on that. It was all, it was his one-on-one interactions. And then he had like his inner circle of Peter, James, and John, and so it's just, like, if you focus to go, to go like, into depth with fewer people, which is how discipleship happens, then I think you're actually looking at what Dallas Willard says, which is you're not just creating a convert, you're creating a disciple. And that's the goal. We, we don't, it's not about getting somebody to cross a line of faith or whatever it may be. You're, you're actually trying to get someone to, like, live the way of Jesus. And that is lifelong, and it's not easy, um, which is good because it's also... It just, I think, speaks to the messiness of life and the fact that Jesus is actually okay with that. Like, so given the fact that he chose the disciples that he did, um, he didn't get the elite, which is what every rabbi would have done. You know, rabbis were like D1 recruiters. They were like SEC, but not Vanderbilt. Bama, you know, Georgia, Tennessee, Ole Miss, the top. You know what I'm saying? Like the cream of the crop. Um, and now apparently Oklahoma and Texas are, I mean, I don't even know what's happening in sports these days, but that's a different podcast. Um, and so like he's, he's going and he's calling these guys who flunked out of what is our equivalent of middle school. They just weren't good enough students to keep going on in the process. So they were never going to become, you know, students of a rabbi. And yet here comes Jesus, this kind of like rabbi on the side, you know, like he's a carpenter, but then he's like, I think I'll do the rabbi thing too. And he's calling these guys to follow him. And they do. And they mess up so much. And, and, I, and Simon, I think that we get so much emphasis on Simon in Luke because he is like every person. He is every Enneagram number <laughs> in a way. Like he's, he's so all over the place, screws it up, gets it right, screws it up immediately again. And it's just this ongoing saga. And so we get to see what it looks like to just try stuff. And I think that's what I would encourage anyone who is thinking like, okay, how do I do this? You know, again, there's all these examples of systems over the last decades, really probably about the last 70 years or so in the evangelical world, uh, of which we are a part, that have been used by God in spite of how wonky some of it is. Um, So like Evangelism Explosion was one example where you were trained to go door to door knock on someone's door, they open it, presumably, and you say, hi, if you were to die tonight, 
would you go to heaven or hell? Which sounds like a veiled threat of murder. I mean, doesn't it, y'all? I mean, like, it sounds like I'm going to do something horrible, and I just need to know if you're ready for that. <laughs> this is what it sounds like. And so, you know, I'm again, God used that, and he used, like, the four spiritual laws, you know, by Bill Bright and Campus Crusade. God loves you. He's got a wonderful plan for your life. You are a sinner in need of a Savior, and then, like, you just keep walking. Uh, or the Romans row, where you just take people through Romans, and you show them all, you know, you're, this is what it was supposed to be. We messed it up. You're bad. Jesus is better, and so forth. And so God uses all of that. But I do think we are living in a time where, like I said, you, you've got to get to the bigger questions that people are actually asking, because a lot of the questions that Christians or the church, even in general, and that's generic, I know, are trying to answer, people aren't asking those kinds of questions. Um, you know, for example, very few people are, are lying in bed at night wondering if there really was a talking snake at the beginning of creation, you know, like, did that really happen? Like, no, they're like, I am swamped in debt and I don't know how I'm going to pay for my kids braces that he needs, or I don't know how we're going to make it to the next month or our marriage is in shambles and we feel like we've done everything right. And so like, as you're thinking about those things, like that's what people are really in tune with um, in their own spirits. So finding those bri- those bridges to build and connections to make, are, those are just good ways to start conversations and not feel like you got to force something, but just be open to where the Spirit may lead you in those moments, in those conversations. You know, somebody, and it, it will be inconvenient, just like Jesus came to these guys at very inconvenient times. Um, it'll be inconvenient. You're not going to like plan, oh yeah, you know what? I actually had 20 minutes left in my schedule at the end of my grocery store trip to mess with your emotional needs. You know, like that's, that's what I was hoping to do today, but it's an opportunity. You know, it's an opportunity to get in there. So, uh, I think if you think about those, those things that you come across on an everyday basis, like you're at work, your cubicle neighbor is annoying that you whatever out of you and like, you just, okay, what's going on? Why are you so angry today? What are you feeling? And let them talk and just listen and then see if there's something there like that you could relate to. Um, you know, you're not the hero in this. You're just, you're just trying to lead them a little bit closer. Um, and, and so again, in all of this, you're showing them what it looks like too. That's what we talked about with C.S. Lewis. He said, you know, the greatest contribution you'll make to someone becoming a follower of Jesus is your life, like showing people what it looks like, the way that you live, not what you say. And so I think those are, um, those are all things where you're just realizing, okay, I don't have to say the perfect thing, which is why most people won't talk about Jesus or the Bible in the first place. There's a fear, like, I'm going to get asked a question I don't know the answer to. And so, no, you, you don't have to worry about all the answers. The internet has most of the answers on those things. So it's just a matter of like, okay, am I willing to, to ask like the hard questions, you know, um, of yourself that people are asking of themselves, being willing to face down difficult moments that people are having in life, um, struggles they're having, fears, you know, all of those things, we all have them. I mean, it's like we're the most medicated, isn't that right? This is the most medicated population in the history, you know, of the world, and yet we're supposed to be the happiest and most fulfilled and connected and all that. So um, so there's just so much to think about in, in there, you know, when you come to, comes to having conversations. But um yeah, and I don't know. You would, you may, if you've got like specific questions, you could always send them in to us, um, podcast at gfcnow.com. But you could, um, you know, as you're thinking through these things, I find that if you will, and hopefully you're in a community group or you have some sort of community, like if you'll be with two or three people and just go hang out or just pay attention when you're together um, and around other people, you'll hear just like eavesdrop a little bit in Jesus' name, um, and just listen to what people are talking about, and that will give you so much insight into how you can get into conversations or what people are really thinking about. Um, and, and honestly, like, the longer you've been a Christian, the harder this is, because I think when you first become a follower of Jesus, you're just like, everybody's got to, I'm going to get everybody on the boat, you know? And the longer you're in it, you're just like, okay, this is kind of the way it is, and then you when it, like I'm waiting for a program that's going to show me how to do evangelism, and then I'm going to do the program, uh, and that's just not how it is. I don't, 
I think a lot of what we do, Jesus probably would not have started. And so he's just like, go do it. You know, you're, yes, it's going to be scary. Yes, it's going to be uncomfortable. But there's only growth at the end of discomfort. You know, it doesn't happen before. And so the more uncomfortable we are, even in our faith, as we're putting ourselves out there into that deep water, as it were, where Jesus had Peter go out and experience that catch of fish, like the, the more we'll get out there and put ourselves in a place where God has to do something or it's just going to be foolish, then I, I think we grow. You know, our faith grows and our trust grows and then confidence grows uh, because confidence only grows with wins. And so like if you can just give yourself like a little win, you know, for the day, like, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to pay attention today to this person. Uh, you know, I've heard them talk a little bit about this thing they're going through, you know, a miscarriage, a divorce, or, you know, their kids like sick all the time for some reason. I'm just going to listen a little bit. I want to ask some questions. I'm going to be curious. Um, evangelism is so much easier if you remain curious and not just confident that you have every answer. And so just being curious, I think is part of it as well. Um, and so there's, again, tons of stuff we could go into there. Um, but hopefully some of that's helpful. Uh, and like I said, if you've got questions, I'd love to hear those. Um, I'd encourage you to go back and listen to the sermon from Sunday. You can do that at gfcnow.com slash messages. And let us know what you thought about this podcast. You can send comments, questions for a future episode to podcast at gfcnow.com. If you have questions about this one, specific questions even about evangelism, whatever it may be, just send them in. Uh, you take 30 seconds to subscribe, leave us a five-star review. And if you are new to Grace Fellowship Church, we would love to get to know you. We really would. Our heart is people. And you can text the words new here. That's just one word and new here to 94,000. And we'll follow up with you this week. Thank you so much for listening. Hope to see you again soon.